this presentation, we will take a look at how to calculate simple interest a few different ways. As we look at this, you may ask yourself, why are we going over this a few different ways? Why not just go over it one way, the best way, and let us learn that well and be able to apply it in each situation. While one way does work in most situations, in other words, we will probably learn one way, have a favorite way to calculate the simple interest and apply that in every circumstance. It's also the case that when we look at other people's calculations or textbook calculation, they may have some different form of the calculation. For example, I prefer a way when I think about the calculation of simple interest to have some subtotals in the calculation and have more of a vertical type of calculation the way we would see if done in something like a calculator. If we see a type of equation in a book, then the idea there is to have the most simple type of equation expressed in as short a way as possible and that typically is going to be some type of formula and that formula will often not be showing the subtotal. So in other words, a textbook has an incentive to show a very compressed type of format for calculating something and individuals, if we want to go back for it, to it, note what happened in it, then we often will benefit by having some subtotals in the calculations that we work through. That's one type of difference we want to know. Other reason we want to know different methods is just to understand the math a bit better. If we understand different approaches, we understand what we are actually doing a little bit better. Another reason is that different people are going to have different minds in terms of how they think of things and how they process things. So we want to be able to look at someone else's work and say, okay, I see what they did here and be able to apply that uh, to ourselves and see what, what they're doing. And again, the more we can understand how other people process things, the better we understand what the material is and how to communicate it to other people. So let's go through a few of these type of ways we can calculate simple interest. So we're going to start with a, a loan, a 50,007% interest rate, and it's a 90-day uh, loan. It's going to be out for 90 days. So we'll start out with the loan amount, 50,000 for our first calculation type. We're going to multiply that times 7%. Now note if we have a calculator, uh, we're typically going to do that by saying 50,000 50, 50, times 0 .07. 0 0.07. If we're in Excel, we format the, these Excel to be percents. We can have a percent. We can use this percent button up here, but I typically use uh, decimal 0 .07. If we move the decimal two places to the right, then of course we would have a 7% and that would give us the 3,500. So in other words, 50,000 times 7% is 3,500. First thing we need to note, this 7% means 7% a year. Unless expressed otherwise, whenever we say that something is so much percent, typically we mean percent a year. So for example, if we say we have a mortgage, we pay the mortgage monthly, but we typically express the, month, the mortgage rate as a yearly rate. Why would we do that? Um, you know, there's a couple different reasons we, we might do that, but one main reason that it's a convention for us to do that is if we took 0.07 and said we want a monthly type of interest rate, if we divide that by 12, we get a pretty small number. So it would be 0.58 something something percent, which is pretty small. We don't really, that's, that's a range that's more difficult for us to express in. Therefore, we typically express interest rates for that reason and just it's a convention in years. So unless expressed otherwise, just note within a problem within any type of discussion, interest typically means a year. And it's similar to if we're talking about a salary, like we say someone makes uh, 70000 we typically probably mean 70000 a year, even if not stated. Then we're going to take that amount and we're going to say how many days are in a year. Now in this calculation, we're taking uh, 360 to make an even rather than 365, which is an assumption of 12 months times 30 days in a month. Of course, there are 31 days or 30 days or 28 days or 29 days in a month. But if we do a nice even calculation here, we get an even 360 for our simple interest calculation. So that's what we will use at this time. So then we're gonna take the 3,500 per year of interest. This is the dollar amount. And this is gonna be 360 days, gives us about $10 a day. Again, that's rounded. It's really 3,500 divided by 360 gives us 9 
uh, 0.72222. So I'm going to use this 10 here just to show it. That's how you'll see it in Excel if you take the decimals off. But note that we're really going to be multiplying by that 9 something. And just remember, when you deal with interest, uh, you're going to have to deal with that. It, not everything's going to run out to the dollar. Not everything's going to run out to the penny. And we'll have some rounding differences. So then we're going to take that times 90, uh, that number times 90 days, and that'll give us 875. Again, not 90 times 10 in this case, because we're using the rounded numbers as we would see in something like an Excel worksheet. So you just got to kind of deal with those kind of things. So if it was 10 times 90, it would be 900. What we really have is the 360 divided by 3,500. Uh, let's do that one more time. What we really have is a 3,500 divided by 360 or 9.72, which was rounded to 10, taken off the pennies. And then we'll take that and we multiply it times 90 days. And that gives us our 875. So then if we take our 875, that's how much we would earn then for the time period for the 90 days at 7% for simple interest. If we take the original amount of the loan, 50,000 we loaned out at day one, we add to it the 875, then we get 50,875 that we would then receive at the end of the loan term. This is the way that one of the ways I think is the most easy to see this. And that's if we break it out by days. Depends on the loan type if we want to break it out by days or months. So if it's less than um, if it's less than a year, then it might be that we want to use days. If a problem's getting very specific, then we'll have to use the actual you know number of days in the month. Just got to be careful on the terms of the problem. If it's going to be a longer term problem, then we might just round these to months and use months as the calculation, as we'll see this time. Same type of idea. We'll take the fifty thousand, multiply it times seven percent. That's going to give us our 3,500. So 50,000 times 7%, the yearly rate, gives us the 3,500 interest per year. Now we're going to take that and we're going to, instead of dividing it by 360 days, we'll divide it by 12, giving us the interest rate per month, 3,500 divided by 12. So again, if we did that with the calculator, we're taking 35 divided by 12. And that gives us not exactly 9292 but 291.6666 on forever note that even if i put the pennies there it's not always going to be exact and we're just have to kind of deal with that that's going to be some rounding issues we will always have when we when we do these types of calculations then we're going to take that amount and multiply it times three where do we get three three months 90 days divided by our convention 30 days per month about gives us three months then we're going to take the this dollar amount uh, per month times the number of months three to give us that 875. Remember that we're not talking about the 292 necessarily. We'll have rounding there. It's a dollar by dollar because really what we're talking about is the 3,500 divided by 12 or 291.6666 on forever times three, and that'll give us our 875. So just be careful of the rounding. It's always going to be a problem. doesn't matter how many places we take it out to. Some of the decimals will repeat forever. So we'll have the 50,000 plus the 875 getting us to that same 50,875. These two ways, the prior way by day and this way by month, are the easiest way for me to think about it because it's linear. This is how you plug it into a calculator. This shows us each step and the subtotals. However, if you were to represent it with, with a short uh, way as possible, then these subtotals aren't something that uh, are typically going to be represented in textbooks because it's just not as neat, not as nice. So um, when you put things out and you calculate them, I would remember them in this format. This is easier for me to remember than a shorter type of formula because the shorter formula doesn't make intuitive sense. I can't say, well, walk through this and say well this is the yearly interest rate this is the rate per year i mean and then we're going to take the rate per per month times the number of months to get the interest so i can't really tell the story to myself the longer story that i can tell is easier for me to remember than a shorter formula which has no story if that makes any sense so anyways bottom line i would remember one of these two methods and for your default method
Okay, so now we're going to do another method. We're going to start off with the number of days in the loan, 90. And we're going to divide that by the number of days in the year. This, of course, is called a ratio. So we're comparing and starting off with the comparison of the loan term, 90 days, divided by the number of days in the year, 360, which again is 12 times 30 for our purposes, rounding it. Instead of 365, it's 360. And that's going to give us 0.25 or 25%. So here's our ratio giving us 0.25. Now that we have that ratio, we can take that ratio, that 0.25, and multiply it times the interest per year, which was that 3,500 or 50,000 times 0.07, that 3,500, and that'll give us our 875. So note this gets to that 875 a bit faster here. We don't have as many calculations or as many steps. However, I find that most students uh, and myself included, when I think about this, the ratio doesn't make as intuitive sense to me as saying, oh, here's the interest rate per year, here's what the interest would be per year, and then breaking it out to either a daily or monthly uh, interest rate and then multiplying times the number of months. Same math, same end result, just a different order uh, of calculations. So just be aware that this, because it's smaller, probably often more represented in a textbook or something, we need to be able to see that. So then we got the 875 plus the 50,000 original gives us the loan that we'll get back at the end of this time period. If we loaned out 50,000 at 7%, simple interest, 90 days, we should get back 50,875. Next, we'll do the same type of thing, but now we're gonna do this by the number of months in the loan. So remember, this is gonna be 90 divided by 30. Gives us three months in the loan. And then we're gonna take that and compare it to 12. 3 divided by 12, 3 over 12, that gives us the ratio of 3 to 12. So 3 divided by 12 will give us that same 25. So note we're doing the same thing, of course, because we're doing the comparison of the time frame. The loan is over, over the total time frame, and as long as we use the same measuring tools, as long as we're in this case using months, or in the prior case we used days for both the loan term and the uh, amount of time within the year, we will get to the same ratio, 0.25 is the percent. So then we're going to, and of course you can simplify these down too and, and see that the, the same ratio, 3 three over 12, if you simplify that down, then uh, and you simplify the, the, uh, the 30 uh, compared to, or the 90 compared to the 360, you'll get to the same ratios, right? So there's the 0.25, and then we're gonna take that and multiply it times the 3,500, which once again is, of course, the $50,000 loan we started with times point, oh, times 0 0.07, 0 0.07, 3,500, and that'll give us the 875. So 0.25 times 3,500 gets us back to that 875. So once again, bits quicker method than the first two we started off with, a little less intuitive in, in my experience with myself and people I've worked with for most people to understand, I believe. Um, total cash received then would be this 50875 Next method. Now we're going to try to break this percentage out as we saw at the beginning and break it out into a monthly rate and we'll deal with that. So we're gonna say, that we're gonna start with the interest rate this time and say that's the yearly rate, that's what default, by default it typically is, divided by 12, and that'll give us the monthly rate. So once again, if I did this with a calculator, we'd say 0.07, that's the 7%, divided by the number of months in a year, 12, gives us 0 0.0058333 on forever. That's a pretty small number, which once again is the reason we don't typically do that. <laughs> we, we don't typically represent the interest rate in terms of months uh, because it typically is a small number and it's just not the convention that we just have out of whatever reason we come up with conventions for. So that's what we're gonna uh, have if we break it down to a monthly rate. Now it's important to know this because when you put stuff into Excel uh, or other types of financial cal calculators at times, then uh, it, sometimes uses this monthly rate. So we'll need to know the rate per period, and that's in this case the monthly rate. And so it's important for us to know this type of calculation when we use tools such as Excel. So that'll give us 0.58%. Remember that is not uh, exact here, this is a rounding, times the loan of 50,000 
gives us 292. So once again, if, be careful of the rounding all the time. The, because this is 0.598, you might first think it's 58%. It's not. We got to move the decimal two places to uh, the left, which was 0 0.0058. It's what it really represents times 50,000. But even that's a couple bucks off. Why? Because this is rounded too. So remember what we had, it's 0 0.07 divided by 12 gives us 0 0.00583333. And that's what we're using times 50,000. So again, just be careful. I could give an example that is perfectly even here, or but it's not, I'd rather give an, a less than perfect example to show that it's not gonna be perfect all the time. It'll be perfect sometimes. So this would be the amount of interest per month, simple interest per month. And now we just need to say, that's a dollar sign, by the way. <laughs> now they've got to say there's how many months in the year. Uh, we're going to say that in the term of the loan, three, or 90 divided by 30, three months. So 292 times three would be 875. Once again, that might be a bit of rounding there. If we say 292 times eight times three, we're going to get 876. Why? Because really what we had, remember, is 0 0.07 divided by 12, which is 0 0.0058. And then we multiply that times the 50,000 to get really 291.6666 divided our times 3. And that's going to be our 875. And then if we take the 875, plus the 50,000 gives us that same 50,875. One more time, one more way, and then we'll stop this. Okay, so we're, we're gonna take that same interest, 7%, break it out to a monthly rate. So 7% divided by 12 gives us that 0.87.58%. Once again, this is rounded, same spot we were at last time. We now have a monthly percent. percent. Now we're gonna take that and multiply times the number of months. So we have 50, we have 90 uh, days divided by three, divided by 30 gives us three months. So if we take that 0.58 rounded, this is rounded times the three, we get about 1.75. And this then would be the interest rate per the time period we're talking about, three months or 90 days. So in other words, if we take a look at this, we have the interest rates 0.07, for a year divided by 12 gives us the interest rate per month. If I move the decimal point over, it's point, uh, 0.58333. This is rounded. This isn't 58%, remember, 0.58, big difference. And then we're going to take that times the number of months, 3, and that's going to give us uh, 0 0.0175 or 1.75%. So this is actually exact now. 1.75 percent and then we're going to take that times the loan amount 50,000 and that'll give us the 875. So remember th this what we did here is we broke down the percent for a three month time period or 90 days and again that's not usual we don't, we don't usually say that we don't usually say hey we're going to pay you a simple interest rate of whatever for a three month time period so just you know be aware that we don't typically say that we're going to pay you 0.58 per month. We typically express things oftentimes with a yearly rate, that yearly rate often being between 1 and like 20, and therefore being a, an interest rate that makes more sense to use. It's, it's within that range. So, but when we do financial calculations, this once again might be a way that uh, we could see this within uh, the, the, the periods that we're talking about, which in this case is a 90 day or three month period. So then we just take that interest rate times the 50,000 gives us the 875. If we add that to the original 50, we get to that same 50,875. So again, I hope this wasn't too confusing or more confusing than it was helpful. But note that uh, when you see this types of calculations in a textbook, they're often so simplified, they, they look to be like the easiest way to see it and they are the easiest way to write it. But obviously, oftentimes a longer type of calculation a more vertical calculation rather than a horizontal type of formula is easier for us to think through, tell a story in our head, remind ourselves what we're actually doing in order to better memorize the calculation for future use and application to other types of problems. 
as well as to just have a format and be able to understand it uh, better for future use and know what we're actually uh, doing rather than spitting out a number that we think is correct just based on the formula but not having any intuitive realization or understanding what it's for and therefore how we can use it to apply to something.